Hi, so today I'm going to be revealing my engineering transcript and in there you will see some of my high points and some of my major low lows and we'll talk about those and I'll reveal some secrets and some keys for success in engineering as we're going through my uh, transcript. <laughs> So overall, big picture, I went to Arizona State University. This is what my whole transcript looks like. We'll be going through this together in semester by semester. So you'll notice in my grades that I do have pluses and minuses on my grades, and I do have a different GPA for each of those pluses and minuses. And yes, at Arizona State University, you could get over a 4.0. And spoiler alert, I was not one of those. <laughs> So before we dive into my transcript, I think there's a very important note here. I actually transferred credits in when I went to Arizona State University. I went straight from high school to undergraduate, but at my high school, we had opportunities for dual credits. So I received college credits that were valid in the state of Arizona, which was a big part of me going to Arizona State University. If you're already at a university, great, keep doing what you're doing. If you are not at a university yet and you're thinking about going into engineering, I'm going to say that having a foundation of college credits ahead of time, especially your Calc 1, Calc 2, at least pre-Calc, and maybe some sciences makes a huge difference and makes it feasible to have an engineering degree in four years or less. So if you have questions about community college or or what all you should do to prepare for a university, please be sure to comment and ask me all about it. I'd be happy to help you understand what kind of courses are fundamentals and how to prepare for a university so you can minimize your student loans. Oh God, so first semester of college was a shock. Um, I was very used to high school where everything came naturally. It was super easy. I took hard classes, but everything was just go to class. I could finish all my homework before I even leave school. Um, I breezed through high school. So when I got to college, um, actually having to do homework outside of class was a little bit of a shock to me. And the idea of studying was completely foreign. So now all of a sudden I was in a room full of people that excelled easily in high school and I wasn't used to that. I was used to being a top performer in my high school and now all of a sudden I'm with all the other top performers and they were all studying and I haven't caught on to the memo of study, study, study. And I had my first failure my first semester of college. So I failed physics one. Um, a lot of you for your first semester are probably going to be taking chem one, but I took a bunch of chemistry in high school. My favorite class my first semester was my engineering design course. If you don't go to a university that has some type of first year engineering program or engineering design course, um, I'm really sorry. And if you're looking for a university, I would look to see that they have something like that. It makes such a huge difference. At least for me, this is a place where I found myself. I found what I enjoyed. I was allowed to be creative. I was encouraged to be creative. And it was all design process and brainstorming and thinking and building and designing. And I loved it. These are the courses I could go to and I could really enjoy engineering because other times I was just sitting there and crunching numbers. And yes, I love math. I love equations. I love all that stuff, but I needed a place where I could also be creative and see the potential of what I could be doing in engineering. And the engineering design courses I took fulfilled that. As an engineering student, I would say these two were my least favorite classes my first semester. I had to get these types of credits and I already transferred a bunch of credits in, so I didn't have to take a math class. And I decided, okay, I'll just take this film studies class because I thought it was gonna be easy. And it was not, it was very time consuming and it wasn't awful or anything. It was just something I wasn't that interested in. And then I had to dedicate a ton of time to it. So thing that I learned here, don't take a class because you think it's gonna be easy. If you're not interested in it, it will be exhausting and you won't like it. It won't be worth it. And then English, I had to take English uh, it was a requirement, but if you are doing community college, I definitely recommend getting English out of the way. At least for me, that was a class that was demotivating. I did not like it, never was a huge fan of English. And so I just wanted to bypass it. Now, some engineers are required to take a technical writing class. Those are important. It's important that we learn how to communicate scientifically. And I actually enjoyed some of that stuff. I didn't have a specific class for that, but we did a lot of that in my introduction to design courses. So we always had to do technical reports. So yes, I really did just switch to my second semester. And yes, I really do have university physics with a fat E again. So I failed physics twice. And it sucked. 
Um, that was probably my lowest point in my entire college career as far as grades. My first semester, I experienced my first failure ever. And then my second semester, I failed the same course again. And there was a lot of other notes that went along with that, um, personal experiences, lack of studying, a lot of different things. And I can talk about that in a whole other place. If you have questions about it, ask me. I would be happy to share more about what happened there. But bottom line, I failed a course two times in a row. And at that point, the university said, all right, like, we're done with you. You can't be an engineer. You can't even pass physics one. Um, it was discouraging, but obviously I am an engineer, so I did finish. I had to do all this extra paperwork and put in for a request to take physics a third time, and that was going to be my last chance. So that was kind of a big low light of my second semester of college. I had two other required engineering courses, so we had to do special research on different topics. There was a lot of ethics involved in that course, and you will notice as we go through my transcript, most of my courses are required engineering courses, and that's just the reality for most engineers. I've sat on committees before, and we've talked about the credit load and what the credits look like and the requirements for engineering students as a faculty. And I can tell you that with ABET accreditations and all the requirements and just everything we're always debating, that yes, most of the time as an engineer, all of your courses will be decided for you unless you decide to go way beyond the requirement for the degree. Um, but those fundamental 128 to 134-ish credits are going to be pre-decided for you. And good for me, luckily, most of my engineering courses were really my favorite courses, even though they were challenging at times. I loved them. So when I came into Arizona State University, I had a bunch of transfer credits. Because I had transfer credits, I was the equivalent of a sophomore, and the university kind of missed the fact that I had to take this required course. So ASU 101 was some required course that was welcome to the Arizona State University campus. Um, and then I had to take it my sophomore year. Wasn't super excited about it, but it was a requirement for my degree. And as you know, or you will find out, if the university tells you you have to do something, you kind of just have to do it. So as I said, at Arizona State University, I was very fortunate. I had a design course every single semester. So my EGR 201 course was continuing those design courses. It was like a lab. We worked in teams. We did different projects. We built things. We designed things. We did lab view, all sorts of stuff. Loved it. That was always my favorite course every semester. So the program that I was in, we got to decide between civil mechanical and electrical engineering, and we had to decide by the end of our sophomore year. But during our sophomore year, we had to start getting all these fundamental courses in and getting introduced to electrical or mechanical or civil, whichever one we decided to go with. Well, I was not ready to make that decision or commitment at the time. So I decided I should just take all the electives available. So this semester, my first semester of my sophomore year, second year, and my um, spring semester of my sophomore year, both of those I took way too many one credit hour classes thinking like, oh, it's a one credit hour class. That's not going to take that much time. False. Anytime you see a one credit hour course that is designated engineering, just know it is not going to be a one credit hour course. Um, engineering professors are famous for trying to overpack their curriculum because everything is super important. I've been there, done that. And it takes a lot longer. So if it says one credit hour or two credit hour, really plan on it being at least two or three credit hours if it's engineering. Don't treat it like a one credit hour course. So this particular semester, I took 17 credit hours, which is a pretty heavy load. But Six of those credit hours were one credit hour engineering elective courses, which ended up being like a two credit hour course. So this semester was pretty crazy for me, but at the same time, it worked out really well because it kind of helped me refocus, recenter, um, let go of the idea that I failed physics, and it really forced me to just buckle down and study a lot. So I kind of needed this reset because as you will see, I got to be in physics. So I passed it, thank God. And here I am an engineer today again, because I passed that course. If I would have failed it a third time, I don't think they would have let me continue at the university. The 
Biggest differences, honestly, one, I took it with a different professor. I did not get along with the professor I had that failed me the first and the second time. And I decided that I needed a fresh start, one for myself and just in general, I just wanted something different. So I took it with a new professor. And then also I took it with my peers. So by this time, a lot of my friends that were in the same cohort with me were taking physics in that semester. So now all of a sudden I actually had peers that I knew and people to work with. So we had big study groups and we would all meet a couple times a week and we would do all the homework together. We would study for all the exams together. And that for me was so important to be successful in that course. And as I said previously, like this was not a usual practice to me. I was used to being very independent, doing all my work on my own, not needing other people, not needing to work with others. And I found in this physics course that it actually was very important for me to have a community of peers and people to study with because I wasn't going to be able to do this on my own. And it was just helpful to have the accountability, the different minds, different perspectives. And sometimes when I was in class and what my professor said seemed completely strange and foreign, it was nice to have other people that we could all bounce ideas off of each other and then really come to an understanding of what that topic was meant to be and what we completely missed in class. So as you'll see from my GPA, that this was a really good semester for me. I ended up enjoying it. And again, for me, it kind of helped having too much credits because I couldn't do anything else. So it really helped me focus myself on school was my top priority. Um, it was kind of hard at times having friends that decided to do different degrees, different programs, different things, and they had more free time than I did. But at this point, I learned to just let that go. And I really spent a lot more time focusing on just my education that semester. So my second semester, my sophomore year, I saw that I did so well my first semester that I wanted to take 17 credit hours again. And I did not learn my lesson of I was doing a little too much. And so I continued on with the tons of different classes, tons of different projects, a lot to do, heavy time commitment. Um, my grades dropped a little bit this semester. Side note, I was going through a breakup and that affected my grades some. So whatever, it is what it is, life happens sometimes. Um, History of Engineering was a course that I was required to take. That's not a course that I see commonly required for engineering students, but I will say that is one of my favorite general study type courses that I took. We learned all about going from manpower to animal power to wind power, water, and just all the different types of power that people used across history and a lot of other engineering concepts and ancient engineering. And I loved that course. Um, so if you have a course like that at your university and that's something you're potentially interested in, I think it's super helpful. And not only was it interesting, I think it helped give me a different perspective of going into things in the future by thinking about what did we do in the past. So at this point, I decided I wanted to be either a mechanical or an electrical engineer. I was undecided between the two. So I still made sure to take all the foundation courses for both electrical and mechanical. But the foundation for electrical, that's where my circuits class in the previous semester and the feedback class, those were related to the electrical degree path. And then the statics, dynamics, mechanics and materials, all of those were related to my mechanical degree path that I was debating between, which I did end up choosing mechanical. So now we're on to my third year. So my junior year, my first semester, again, I'm still taking that fundamental design course that was required in every semester, which again, super grateful that I had a program that did this because this is something that always kept me inspired. So in this particular semester, we were doing thermodynamics. So in my design course, we built a Stirling engine, which was a blast. So junior year, that's when we started getting into the thermodynamics and heat transfer. Those classes are hugely important. And all I can say is I wish that I took better notes, studied harder and paid more attention and really engaged more. I did take a lot of notes. I did study really hard. I did really well in those classes, but still I wish I would have done even more because those are so fundamental to mechanical engineering. So I would say in those classes, pay extra close attention. And the one thing that I really wish I would have done more is focus more on the concepts. So not just what equation do I use when, but really conceptually understanding what is it that I'm learning? The big picture, how does this apply to the world? 
and how will this apply in engineering projects that I'm going to do? So the summer between my sophomore and my junior year, I started an internship at a materials engineering company. At this point, I decided to start taking more materials engineering courses because I thought it was interesting how I would go to work and I'm learning about stress and strain and material properties and heat transfer in materials and how different phases of materials and chemical etching and all these different things. And then I'm going to class and I'm learning it from a more conceptual book perspective. And then I got to have both perspectives and I'm constantly reflecting back and forth between the two. And I think that's another thing is taking that time to really reflect and connect things. One thing I'll say from a faculty perspective, I feel like it was really hard for faculty members to come together and really highlight how do the courses interact and what, how do they complement each other and why do they go together? So sometimes that's on the students. And as an engineering student, I think it's super important to take that extra time to sit down and ask those questions of how do these things relate to the real world? How do they relate to each other? How will they relate to future projects? How do they relate to what I'm doing at work? How do they relate to my daily life? And really try to bring that context in yourself. I truly believe that those moments of reflection are so critical to be a successful engineer. On another side note, I also got really interested in alternative energies at this point. So I decided to start seeking out classes related to that as well. And I will say, if you find yourself interested in different engineering topics, don't be afraid to take an extra class here or there. Now, don't overload your schedule and be taking like 18, 19, 20 credit hours. That's going to cause a lot of burnout. But if something inspires you and you're interested, you're interested for a reason. So go check it out. Take an extra class audit a class, something, and just get a little more embedded in that because who knows, you might decide to change the discipline that you're studying. Or if you're a mechanical engineer, you can go anywhere with a mechanical engineering degree. It's very diverse. There's a lot of things you can do. So the more that you look at different specializations and opportunities, the better you'll be set up for deciding what kind of job you want to do. So I would say keep exploring different things related to what you're doing and find what you're most interested in. So we are so close. This is when I was getting so close to graduation, just ready to graduate. Um, and yes, I had a whole nother year ahead, but something about finishing that third year was probably the hardest year. That second and third year really are the hardest years of college, I would say for engineering degrees, because you're getting a lot of your really rigorous engineering courses. One thing that you have not seen on my transcript yet is a single math class. As I said, I went to a high school where there's opportunity for dual credits and I took Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, and differential equations in high school. So I didn't have any required math courses to take until my second semester of my junior year. And then I had to take applied linear algebra. And I will say it was tough because I was a little rusty on my math. So the only math that I had been seeing since high school was in all my engineering courses. And I think that that hurt a little bit, but as you can see, I still ended up getting an A in the class. I did well. I liked that class. I had fun with it, but I really wish I would have taken more math classes throughout college. Even though they weren't required, I wish I would have found alternate math classes I could take or just retake Calc 3 and differential equations just because. Um, I think it would have been a fairly easy grade. And also I could have had more community with my peers because all my peers were taking these math courses and I wasn't in those. So that's one of the reasons I also started exploring the alternative energies and material stuff more as well, because I had those free slots. So it's a give and take. And that's what most things are. When you're coming up with your course schedule, it helps to consult with other people. I consulted more with my peers than I did with any advisors. And when a professor was willing to take the time, I always ask a professor as well. But for the most part, it was just meeting and talking with my other peers and then looking at the plan of study requirement. And so I would say, take advantage of what courses are there. Again, remember that this is supposed to be fun and opportunity to learn. And if your friends are taking a class and you decide to take it with them just because you want to hang out with them and you're interested in, you're both interested in materials engineering, why not? You know, building friendships is just as important as learning the materials, in my opinion, because doing really well in a class and you're completely isolated, you might be able to pull off the best grade in that class, but are you gonna be able to complete all four years of college in that kind of state? But if life happens, 
and you don't have a community around you and you're in that isolated status where you're just trying to do your best and working alone and independently, it's a lot harder. I've seen a lot of engineering students go through depression, isolation, and a lot of other problems as they're in engineering, and I've seen extreme cases of it as well. So I think that, yes, your grades are important, but it's more important to also be building friendships. And if you're building friendships and that means you get a B instead of an A, I would fully support that any day. But a lot of times it doesn't work out that way anyway. As I said, I tried to do physics on my own and I failed it twice. I built um, study groups and I started being intentional with friends and then I ended up passing the class with a B. So for me, it made a positive impact. But yeah, at times, maybe my grades dropped a little bit because I went out a little bit too much and chose to have fun versus studying for an extra five hours. And maybe that was a choice I needed to make. So that's something that you're going to have to think about and be intentional in your decisions. So we've made it my senior year. And for me, this was my last year. So again, I started my college degree with 37 credit hours of college credit. So I already had a full year out of the way, basically. So for me, getting an engineering degree in four years wasn't bad. And also my senior year, you'll see, was pretty laid back. But it doesn't always go this way. So you can't have this huge expectation of like, you have to get an engineering degree in four years. Plus, if you do a co-op, that's going to change the number of years. If you do anything that's a study abroad or anything outside of the traditional plan of study, or God forbid you fail a course like I did, that can really set back your plan. So keep in mind, a lot of engineers finish their engineering degree in five years. That's not abnormal. There's nothing wrong with that. And that just happens. And it really also depends very heavily on where you're entering math. If you're starting engineering and the first course you're taking is pre-calc or anything lower than that, you're already setting your plan of study back by almost a whole year, sometimes even more. So keep in mind, they're expecting engineers to start with Calc 1 and sometimes even Calc 2, but definitely starting with Calc 1 at least. Hence, I really promote community college or looking at other options at least a summer of community college. That way you don't have to enter engineering already behind on their plan of study at that university. As you may have already noticed, I um, have Gen Chem 1, which is normally we take your first semester of engineering in my first semester of my senior year. So as I said, I took a bunch of chemistry, science, and everything at the high school, and it turned out I opted out for one of my chem classes to count as college credit because I didn't think it'd be that big of a deal. And I opted in for my second chem class to count as college credit. Well, it turned out I got chem two credit, not gen chem one credit. So I was in my senior year and I had a decision to make. I could either take biology or I could take chemistry one. And I decided it's my senior year. I'd rather take a blow off class than have to really commit to something. So I was like, well, I've already done three years of chemistry in high school and only received upper division credit. So I might as well just go get the lower division credit and get it over with. As you can see throughout some of my transcripts, I did not commit myself to my grades every semester. Sometimes I would get very obsessed and focused on what my grade was, getting the best and the highest grade. And sometimes I kind of just let it slide. So chemistry, yeah, I could have probably gotten an A, but I ended up with a B plus, which was fine. I realized that I kind of blew off some of the homeworks as is. So B plus was plenty good for me. I don't recommend blowing classes off, but I can't say that I had never done it either. So my other two big engineering courses this semester were my engineering design and the physics two course, which was the vector mechanics and vibration course. So those two were my big engineering courses for mechanical engineer. And then I had my capstone. I absolutely love my capstone. I will say out of everything I did at the university course-wise, I think capstone was my favorite. So my capstone, we partnered up with Honeywell and we got to create a testing machine to test touch screens. So we could look at the longevity of touch screens to determine if they could be used in planes so they could get certified through the FAA. That was one of my favorite things about the program that I was in. So in this particular program, we partnered up with different industry people and they paid for our capstone project and they were the ones that are, were our stakeholders. They were the ones that judged us. I mean, our professors gave us the final grade, but at the end of the day, the people we were doing the consulting work with, they were the ones who were saying what we needed, the requirements, they set all of the bars there. And then when we did our presentations, we were presenting to them. 
And whenever we had questions, we were communicating with them. When we had budget things, they were the ones setting it. And that particular project, we ended up spending $25,000 on this testing machine and it ended up getting put into their actual lab at Honeywell in Arizona, which was super cool. We got to go there, we toured it. And just like a real engineering project, things came up all the time that changed our entire project. It was a lot of fun. I remember at one point when we went to go tour the lab, we were walking in there and this whole time we had been designing this massive testing machine and we're walking in and we're like, so wait, how is this device going to be getting in here? And they're like, oh, through this doorway around this corner. And it was like, all of a sudden here was a new limitation we weren't expecting. Our stakeholders didn't communicate that to us. They didn't say it had to be within 36 inches, but now all of a sudden we had a doorway that was 36 inches and our requirements changed. So we had to deal with real life circumstances of what engineering looked like. And I loved that about it. My best friend, her project was with Sandia National Labs. I think somebody else worked with Boeing. We had a bunch of different companies there. So if you're looking at different universities and you're still trying to make a decision of where you want to go study engineering, to me, that's a huge factor to bring in is do they do capstone projects with companies? If they have industry connections and you're doing capstone projects with different industries, to me, that's huge. So if you have University A, University B, and you're still trying to make that decision and you know that one of them has corporate sponsorship and they do capstone projects with industry people, pick that university over the other. It's a lot of fun. It makes it more real. It's challenging. It's scary, but it's just completely inspirational. I recommend that to anybody. So for me, my last semester, I was very fortunate. I did not have to maintain a full-time student status because I wasn't international. I didn't have any type of funding that required that. So I just took the last two courses I needed. That way I could just really enjoy my senior year and mostly just focus on my capstone project. And I know a lot of people are unfortunate to be able to have this, but for me, I think planning out ahead of time as best you can to try to get a lot of your courses out of the way and make your senior year the most about your capstone as you can. Because yes, my capstone was only four credit hours per semester, only up being eight credit hours. Like, and I say only, I know that is a lot, but the amount of time I spent on my capstone had to have been 20, 30 hours per week regularly. And that was because I loved my project and I was super excited about who we were working with. And it was a lot of fun. And I took on the responsibility of being the project manager for my team. And again, we had a $25,000 budget. We were doing a lot of really big, cool stuff. So I'm glad that I had the time I could commit to that project, but I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't plan ahead of time of trying to get all my courses out of the way. So all of that 144 credit hours later, and I graduated engineering, received my degree and ended up with a 3.3 GPA, which isn't bad for engineering. It's not anything incredible. I know plenty of people who have better GPAs. Um, as far as my own GPA, I will say it didn't significantly limit me in most places. So most of the time you need a 3.0 or a 3.25 for a lot of jobs you apply to. I've seen a couple job applications where they look for someone with a 3.75. That is extremely high and unlikely. So a lot of times in engineering, really a 3.0, 3.25, 3.2, I would say that's the bar. Like if you can get over that, then you will be in a good place for most things that you do. Now, as far as going to graduate school, my GPA wasn't a problem to get into graduate school, but it was a problem when I went for extra funding. So there was an opportunity through the National Science Foundation where you could get funded for your graduate program. And it was a graduate research fellowship program, GRFP. If you're thinking about graduate school, ask me what that is. And I'll tell you all about it because it's a great funding opportunity. But for me, that 3.3 held me back there. So they specifically noted that the reason they wouldn't fund me and they didn't select me was my GPA. But again, most places, my GPA did not limit me. This was the only real big roadblock that I ever faced because of my GPA. So there it is. There's my four years. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it's helpful. And again, please, I love the questions. I love the comments. I'm happy to respond, happy to help wherever you're at, whether it be debating where to go to college, struggling with what you're currently in, deciding to change disciplines. So all of these are things that I've either gone through myself or I've helped others with. So I've experienced it as an engineering student or I've helped out as an engineering faculty member. So happy to help, happy to answer them. 
keep the questions coming, love the comments. And if you want to stick around for more, be sure to subscribe. Thanks. Bye.